Greetings everyone. This video is just a continuation of our discussion on job costing, where we'll be, we will be specifically talking about how to calculate our predetermined manufacturing overhead rate and then use that rate to calculate our allocated or applied overhead. So the first thing we need to do is calculate a rate. And I typically just call this the overhead rate, but the technical term is our predetermined manufacturing overhead rate. So this is really step one in the process of calculating allocated overhead. So to calculate the rate, we're gonna take the total estimated overhead cost and divide that by the total estimated quantity of the allocation base. Now we have to determine what is an allocation base? And this could be different for different companies. So before we move on, let's, let's talk about what an allocation base is. An allocation base is what's driving your cost. And that could be different for different companies. If a company is entirely automated, then machine hours might be a good option for them as a cost driver. If a company is not automated and they are more labor intensive, then either direct labor hours or direct labor cost may be a good option for them as a cost driver. Now looking back up at our uh, equation, why do we use estimated numbers in this equation here as opposed to actual numbers? So we'll think about that for a second. If we used actual numbers in our equation up there to calculate the rate, then we would end up with no under or over allocated overhead as we've talked about in prior videos. The reason we use estimates is because we really don't know actual numbers until the year is completed because we're using total overhead and total allocation base for our entire year or entire period. And we wouldn't know that information until the period or year is over. So we have to use estimates to be able to come up with allocations for overhead on specific jobs that we might need to bid on if we don't know numbers until the end of the year, it's difficult for us to make a um, competitive bid on a job. Step two in the process of calculating allocated overhead is to take the rate that we calculated in step one and multiply that times what actually happened with the allocation base. So if a specific job used 100 direct labor hours and that's our allocation base, then we, we would calculate our rate based on direct labor hours. Then we would multiply that estimated rate by what actually happened with the direct labor hours for that particular job. So this allocated overhead that we've calculated here now is what appears on the right hand side of our overhead T account and goes into work in process. So now let's look at an example. Patel Foundry uses a predetermined overhead rate to allocate overhead to individual jobs. Based on the machine hours required, at the end of the year the company expected to incur the following, and at the end of the year the company had actually incurred the following. So there's some key words we really have to think about this whole time that we're reading this problem. So it tells us in the first sentence that overhead is allocated based on machine hours. So we know our cost driver or our allocation base. We also see the words expected, so that sounds like estimated, and we also see the word actually. So you think about when we calculate a rate, we need estimated stuff. We also need the actual stuff when we create our overhead T account because the actual stuff is on the left hand side or the debit side of our overhead T account. So question one down here asks us to compute Patel's predetermined overhead rate. So remember when we're calculating our rate, we take estimated overhead divided by estimated allocation base. So the estimated overhead is $730,000. And our estimated allocation base, we know the allocation base is machine hours. So we're going to go down here and grab our machine hours of 66,000 machine hours. 
Notice that we didn't need direct labor hours or direct labor cost, I'm sorry, at all. That was just additional information that wasn't needed in this particular problem. So for our rate here, you should come up with about $11.06 per machine hour. The next step is to record the journal entry for allocating overhead. So if you think back to the map that we drew with all these flows of cost through the production process, we know that when we apply overhead into process, we're going to debit our work in process account and it's coming out of overhead with a credit. So we've got our journal entry, but now we've got to figure out what amount is applied. So we've got our rate of $11.06 and six cent per machine hour. So now I need to go and find my actual machine hours, which is down here, I pulled it over. So we got 58,000 machine hours actually happened. And this comes out to be 60 or $641,480. And that will go into our journal entry. So 641,480, 641, 480. Now we can look at part three. Post the manufacturing overhead transactions to the overhead T account. So I'm going to draw my overhead T account down here. So again, remember the left side is your actual overhead and the right side is your applied or allocated overhead. So we've got to come over here to this list and decide what makes up actual overhead in this list. Well, direct labor cost is not overhead, obviously but depreciation on property, plant, and equipment, um, that is overhead. So 440,000 would be here. Property taxes on the plant, there's that keyword plant. We know that's automatically overhead. Sales salaries, that's a period cost because it's a selling cost. Delivery driver's wages, that's also a selling cost. That's a period cost. Remember period costs are different from product costs because period costs are expensed when incurred and product costs are not expensed until a product is sold. And then we have plant janitor's wages. We know that word plant is definitely overhead. All right, so that's all the costs we have. And we know that we applied $641,480. Remember, that's right here. That's where we're getting that credit from. And now we just get our summation. Is it a debit balance or a credit balance? So it looks like we applied more than we actually incurred, so we are over applied in this particular problem. And remember, we don't want overhead to have a balance, so we would end up getting rid of this by debiting overhead for that 174480 and crediting cost of goods sold.